And we are live here for the Mo Summit with John Rapogel. John, how are you doing today? Good morning. Doing great. Inspired. It's great to have you here. What brings you to the Mo Summit? Well, I was excited to be here to convene with other thought leaders in sustainable leadership. And uh, boy, have I been inspired. Um, my company is currently working with four companies that are real leader 100. So it's, a, it's an incredible uh, chance to learn, connect, and, uh, and share our stories. What is your company and what do you do? Well, currently I am leading a group called One Better Ventures. Uh, if you think about us, we're an impact advisory and investment firm. So we will go in and work with mission-led consumer goods companies in high growth mode and get alongside them. We're operators. Alongside them on strategy, on branding, on route to market, on talent, organization, mission, culture, the whole thing. And if they need financial capital, we can provide that as well. What do you like so much about this job? Well, I, for me right now, after running businesses for the last you know, 10, 15 years, uh, it is really nice to put down the reins of running simply one company and lift up many reins, you know, see a multitude of businesses, see an array of problems, and to frankly be able to leverage what I've learned and apply that across a lot of different businesses. So I feel like, you know, it sounds like a trite term, but almost a multiplier effect. I get to really spread myself and, and help so many other people rather than just focusing on one company at a time. Impact and momentum are big themes of this conference. What does impact mean to you? Yeah, impact is uh, translated in business. That's using business as a force for good, simply put. Um, and I'm a big believer in that. I've, I've had the chance to lead a couple of companies like Burt's Bees and Seventh Generation. Seventh Generation being a company that was a founding B Corporation or Benefit Corp. And you know, we really designed our whole organization and uh, operating model around doing more good. You know, we believe fundamentally uh, in human health, uh, and we believe that you can't live a healthy life on a sick planet. So we, we take this intersection between doing well in the world for people and doing well for the planet. And you put people and planet together and you create a business model that also delivers some profit and that's an impact company. So you said you had a lot of experience. What brought you to the impact space and what were you doing before that? Yeah, you know, I had an incredibly uh, good fortune in my career. I, I uh, worked for Guinness, uh, the beer company, for eight years, had a tremendous experience, lots of growth, sales and marketing. I got to uh, lead the company over in the UK um, and then moved to the US and was president of Guinness. And at that time, I was about 35 years old. I had a wife and two children. I was working on my personal mission statement with a coach. Uh, and then I had what's called a spirit in the chest moment. I, I woke up and realized that I wasn't fulfilling my purpose. That what I wanted to do with my life and what I was doing at work weren't congruent. And so I had to find a way to live my purpose through my work. Uh, and so I made the hard choice to leave Guinness, uh, I moved to a company called Unilever, and I had the good fortune to work with some incredibly creative people on something called the Dove Campaign for Real Beauty. Uh, we had a $400 million a year marketing budget, uh, and we did some research and we realized that women felt less good about themselves after reading a beauty magazine than they did beforehand. And we were perpetuating that. Uh, and deep studies, I have four daughters of, of, of young women, self-esteem is everything. Mm. So we said, what can we do with this incredible fund of money to change the way people feel about themselves and to build self-esteem in young women? Uh, and that Dove campaign for Real Beauty continues today. And that was the moment in time when I realized that my life's mission and my work could go hand in hand. So you're able to align your core values with your career, essentially. Why do you think it took so long to figure out your own personal belief, your own personal purpose, like you, like you mentioned? Yeah, I you know, I I'm, was, again, incredibly fortunate to be well-educated. I, I went to the Harvard Business School. Um, but everything that I learned at the Harvard Business School was all about uh, creating value, maximizing shareholder returns, transactions, and competing. 
They had very little to do with your moral compass, how to work in the world, how to build high performance and effective teams. Um, and so while I learned a great deal about how business works, I didn't know how to leverage the power of business nor uh, spent a lot of time in self-reflection. And it was only later in life, um, as my family grew and as I developed children, that I started to think deeply about what will my legacy be. Um, and I, as I said, I got a coach, and, and that was really a game-changing moment for me. What do you think is the biggest misconception about using business as a force for good? Well, I think there is a this belief that there's a fallacy of trade-offs, that that you can't do well and do good, that somehow you're sacrificing profit by caring for people, uh, by building a culture that is, is inherently caring and loving and, and nurturing of your employees. Um, I think that's just all wrong. Uh, time and time again, you know, whether it be at Burt's Bees or seventh generation, we, we have proven uh, that you can do well and good. Um, and so we just have to help uh, more investors in particular and draw more capital uh, to companies that really think about uh, having a positive impact because there's been a lot of research done and actually they're the fastest growing segment of the economy uh, and their value is being uh, is growing faster than the S&P 500, about four times faster in fact. So, so real impact um, uh, both financially and, and socially and, uh, and so we've just got to strip away that fallacy that there's a trade-off there. And it's going to take a lot of effort to reach our goals. Um, where do you see your role um, in this mission? Well, I, I see myself as, as an advocate, as, a, as an ambassador in a way. And, and I, I like to spend time uh, speaking and, and, and coaching. Uh, I spent some time yesterday with a group of 75 business leaders from across the state of North Carolina at a conference that's being held right next door called Leadership North Carolina and talked about what it means to be a sustainable leader. Uh, what are the principles and the hallmarks of an impact leader in the 21st century? So uh, I've been well coached, I've had great experiences, and now it's my time to give back and, and to really amplify this movement uh, that we're creating. And to you, what do you think is the most important aspect of leadership? Well, I think it begins with self, self-awareness, you know, self-insight. You have to be true to yourself, uh, and then you need to go beyond yourself. You have to believe in serving others. And if you have strong self-insight and that conviction and you can serve others, that may, I think will make you a great impact leader. Uh, you've got to be guided by courage and vision and have a strong moral code as you go. Um, but all of those things ultimately will allow you to become your greatest self. I'm curious, can you share your personal mission? Sure, yeah, my, my mission is to help people realize their greatest impact in life. Mm, I like that. Yeah. So everything you do is based off that statement. That's right, exactly. I try to align how I spend my time, how I coach, how I invest, uh, how I raise my children um, against that, uh, that mission. How important is it for your employees to find their own personal mission? I think critical. I think the, the journey of self-discovery uh, is everything. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to self-actualize all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the highest form of being. And so if we can do, if we can create a culture and an environment and a support system that helps people realize their fullest potential to come really face-to-face uh, -face with what they're here for and how they can serve, uh, that's the best thing we can do for our employees. What advice would you give to your 30-year-old self after you graduated Harvard? Yeah, school? yeah. Um, throw away what you learned uh, and follow your heart. You know, I think uh, I was so trained in the brain that my brain took over what my heart was trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a long time to strip away that. You know, I, I was defining success based on achievement and, and my uh, rising through organizations and whether the company had grown and was profitable. And that really wasn't the, the goal in life. The goal was, am I making people's lives better? Um, and once I really became true to myself and what I was hearing in my heart, uh, that was when, you know, I think my, my career turned from black and white to color, you know, and everything really became uh, much more meaningful for me. I like that. That resonates. 
Well, John, thanks for coming on the Relayers Live today. We talked a lot about uh, where you started, um, that, that pivotal moment where you got, took that spear in the chest uh, in your life, um, your leadership advice, and, and uh, you know, everything wraps around your personal mission to, and it is, is released in everything you do. That's what we consider leadership. What would you say your definition of a real leader is? I'd say a real leader is one who uh, seeks truth, uh, has the courage uh, to change things, uh, and uh, has the power to be vulnerable uh, when helping and serving others. Wonderful. John, thanks for coming on Real Leaders Live today. Pleasure. Folks, thanks for tuning in this morning um, uh, to the Real Leaders Live, and we're going to now uh, show a Real Leaders Top 100 Impact Companies video. John, thanks for your time today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.